What is going on guys? Nick here, back with another video. In a lot of my videos, I've talked about the fair PE of a stock and shown how I use it to determine what I think a company is worth. But a few people were asking me, how do I actually find the fair PE value of a company? So in this video, I'm gonna show you guys the formula I use to determine the fair PE value of a stock, and I'll show you how to calculate its future upside, and last, I'll show you how to determine the value of a company that isn't profitable yet. But before I get into this, I wanna mention something first. This is all assuming that you've already done your homework on the company and they have a healthy balance sheet, they have a strong cash flow statement. Don't only rely on a cheap PE value to decide if you should buy something or not. Now, if you don't know what PE is, it's basically the price divided by the earnings or how much you're willing to pay for $1 of earnings. A PE of 10 means you're willing to pay $10 for $1 per share that they earn. Before I came up with this formula, I used to hear a lot of specific industries and stocks trade at different PE values, but it was never really clear how this was actually determined in the first place. Some businesses, while in the same industry, have way different outlooks than others. While Ford and Tesla are both car manufacturers, it doesn't make as much sense to me to say that we should pay the same amount for $1 of each company's earnings. Because we can assume that Tesla's earnings will grow at a much higher rate. So we're willing to pay a lot more for $1 worth of Tesla's earnings today because we know in the future they're going to earn a lot more. Determining the fair PE ratio isn't an exact science and everybody seems to find a different way to determine a stock's value value, but this is just how I do it. I encourage everybody watching this to think for themselves and try to find your own way, but if you need to start, you're more than welcome to use my formula. So here's the formula. We take one plus the growth rate minus the 10 year treasury bond rate to the 10th power times 10. Now if all of this is super confusing, at the end I have something that'll make it really easy for you. So for this formula to work, we only actually need two numbers. The first number is the growth rate we expect this company to achieve over the next 10 years. I basically just go on to Morningstar.com and look at a company's past 10 years and learn about what I can expect for this company going forward. Then I just take a guess at its future growth rate but I do try to err on the conservative side when I make this growth rate guess. The second number is the 10 year treasury bond rate and it's super easy to look this up. You can just go onto Google and type it in and it comes right up. And I also have a link in the description with a table where you can go look it up very easily. We have to subtract the 10 year treasury bond number because when interest rates go up, it brings the value of stocks down. If you have to choose between investing in a stock that pays 5% per year or a bond that pays 5% per year, a smart investor would always choose the bond. The reason being there's no risk with buying bonds. But right now the problem is interest rates are so low that it really doesn't matter very much. Uh, the current yield for a 10 year treasury bond is only 0.74%. So let's say I have a company that I expect to grow at 7%. The formula would look like this, one plus 0.07 minus 0.0074 to the 10th power times 10, and that would equal 18.3 for the fair PE value. So now most websites, when you see the PE value, they're usually referring to the past year worth of earnings. But in a situation like now, where there's a global pandemic and almost every company's earnings are affected, this doesn't really give us an accurate value of the company's earnings potential. Let's say a company last year earned $3, this year has earned 50 cents, and next year is expected to earn $4 per share. Assuming we know that the 50 cent earnings are due to a temporary condition, it wouldn't make any sense to base your valuation on that. What we can then do is look at the projected earnings and apply our PE value to determine its future upside, sometimes called the forward PE ratio. So let's start by me showing you how to quickly look up next year's earnings forecast on Yahoo Finance. Okay, so if we pull up Yahoo Finance and we just type in the uh, ticker we wanna see, go over to Google, We'll hit the details tab, scroll down to analysis, hit view all, and there's a lot of interesting stuff in here, but we'll see at the very top, next year their average estimate for 2021 is $56.60. This is where I pull the information from. Okay, so now let's put it all together and see how this works. Let's say we have a stock that earned $5 per share over the last year. We're expecting them to grow at 12%, and next year, analysts are projecting them to earn $6.80. A growth rate 
of 12 put into the formula comes out to a fair PE value of 29. So to determine the valuation, all we do is take the PE ratio and multiply it by the earnings. So 29 times $5 equals a fair value of 145 per share. They're projected to earn $6.80 next year, so 680 times 29 equals $197 upside. If the share price is currently 160 per share, we would say that it's overvalued based off of the trailing earnings, but because next year it has an upside, of $197 per share, it's probably not a great idea to sell because if we just wait, the valuation is going to catch up. Now, one thing I wanna mention real quick is valuations are always an estimate not an exact number. In your neighborhood, you might think that a 1,200 square foot, two bedroom, two bath house is worth 250,000, and somebody else might think that that same house is worth 260,000. Neither guess is necessarily wrong, but if somebody else comes by and pays $750,000 for that same house, they're probably paying way too much. Stocks are similar when you're using buy and hold strategies. You might think that something is worth $50 per share and somebody else might think it's worth $60 per share and somebody on Wall Street Bets probably thinks it's worth $600 per share. Okay, so the last thing I wanna show you guys is how to calculate a company's value when it isn't profitable yet. For this, all we need is the growth rate, the 10-year treasury bond rate, and then the profit margin that we expect them to achieve when they do become profitable. All we do is take the exact same formula as above and then multiply it by the profit margin that we expect them to achieve. So a company growing at 20% per year with an expected profit margin of 5% would look like this. 1 plus 0.2 minus 0 0.0074 to the 10th power times 10 and then times 0 0.05. That gives us a price to sales ratio of 2.922. When you hear price to sales, think price to revenue because generally that's all it is. You can then take this number and multiply it by the revenue and compare it to the market cap. The price to sales number is your valuation and the market cap is the stock market's current valuation. So in the earlier example, let's say the revenue for the company is 250 million. So 250 million times 2.922 would give us a valuation of 730 million and a half dollars. If the current market cap was $500 million, we would say that it's currently undervalued and worth buying. So I have a link in the description so that you guys don't have to pull up these formulas all the time and you can just plug in the numbers for yourself. Feel free to make a copy of it and use it if it's helpful. I also included a table where you can add a ticker and an expected growth rate and it'll give you a valuation. It'll show you the valuation based off of the trailing earnings, the forward earnings, and a five-year price target. I also have a PE reverser that will take the current PE ratio and show you what a company needs to achieve to actually justify the current PE rate. And then, just for fun, I included a price to sales calculator so you can do it too. Alright guys, I hope you liked the video. I put a lot of effort into creating these spreadsheets over the years and figuring out these formulas. And since I'm giving it all the way completely for free, the only thing I ask for is a thumbs up and a subscription if you haven't already. It really helps out the channel and I make these videos because it's fun and I'm tired of seeing so much awful advice. So let me know in the comments if you have any questions about any of the stuff that I've talked about in this video as always. And thanks for watching.